When people look at a finished Fleming yacht in all its complexity, I'm often asked, how did it all begin? As a kid, I was always experimenting, usually not very successfully, as I had no one to guide me. Here I am with my sister and my first attempt at boat building, which capsized in the surf and was abandoned on the beach. Things began to take off when I started my engineering apprenticeship at de Havilland Aircraft. In those days, de Havilland's was a huge company with many factories. This is the main aircraft company at Hatfield. Across the other side of the airfield was the propeller company, which also made missiles. And at the very top of the photo, the apprentice school. The house was a hostel for apprentices, with the workshops in the background. Here I am, back row, second from the left, three weeks after my 17th birthday. The machine shop is in the foreground, the hand-fitting benches behind, and the woodwork on the mezzanine floor. After one year in the school with a day release and night classes at the local technical college, apprentices moved to the main aircraft factory. At that time, de Havilland's were building the first ever pressurized passenger jet called the Comet, which suffered unexplained catastrophic failures. Research into the cause involved placing a fuselage into a giant water tank and pressurizing it to simulate flight cycles. Eventually it failed, ruptured essentially because the windows were too square. I walked past this tank every day en route to my place of work. In common with many aeronautical apprentices, my interests migrated to cars. In my case, due mainly to Colin, standing next to me in this photo. My first car was a 20-year-old 1934 Fraser Nash BMW Cabriolet, which I decided to strip down to the last split pin and rebuild into a more sporty form. Here is myself on the left with Colin and a fellow enthusiast. My BMW is in the background. Here I am, posed in the farmyard in St Albans, where she was mostly built, with the rear end completed. And this is the completed first version. I spent 11 weekends per year, plus two full weeks, as a lowly naval rating reservist. Here, after two years of work, is the final version of the car, with slotted wheels. Slots were drilled out using a quarter-inch drill, then chiseled and filed by hand. Twelve slots per wheel. Shortly after completion, my apprenticeship was over and the car had to be sold. Asking price, £295, less than $1,000, and I never expected to see it ever again. Fifty-five years later, I was in Dartmouth Harbour in southern England in my boat Venture en route to Iceland when I met up with someone I had known at de Havilland's. He told me he had seen my BMW advertised in a magazine he had picked up in the waiting room of a doctor's office. I knew the magazine could only be Motorsport, first published in 1924 and still around today. I contacted them and they put me in touch with the BMW Historic Motor Club, UK. They sent me copies from pages in their newsletter speculating on the origins of this vehicle. One even had my name and my mother's address. There were several stories about the car and I was very pleased to be able to fill in the gaps in its history.
But where is the car now? Here she is in Germany, gussied up and in immaculate condition in 2009. This is the first operational device I ever made and it is very rewarding to find it looking so good after 56 years. So, that's how it all began. <laughs>